Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is part five in the 10 part XAPI and Articulate Storyline tutorial series. And we're covering something pretty good in this one. We're looking at how we can collect open text responses from an Articulate Storyline course using XAPI. So, you know, the, the user is going to be able to enter anything they want in these open text responses. Maybe it's a survey question, maybe it's a, a long form response but we're gonna be able to capture that data with XAPI. So let's dive in here and get started. We're gonna start in the Storyline course today. So once you have the Storyline file opened up, and this is going to be the same Storyline file we've been working on over the last uh, four tutorials, we're gonna add a new slide. So right now we have this slide where we ask the user's name and email. We also have this you know, really simple question slide with an optional cheat sheet. But we're going to create a brand new slide. I'm just going to right click the current one, go to new slide, basic layouts, and then select blank. And this one's going to be our question. So I'm just going to copy this text box from here. I'm going to paste it. You know, you could also do insert and then go to text box right here. And I'm going to make this a, a survey question. So we'll say, um, how did you like this course? And then I'll center it on the slide. And now we need to add the actual text input box where the user can enter their response. So I'm going to go to this insert tab at the top. Then we're going to go to this input option and we'll select that. And at the bottom left of this uh, pop-up, we're going to select the text entry field. Now you'll notice our cursor changed to this plus sign and we're going to just click and drag a box that's going to hold the user's text input. So you can style this however you want. Maybe I'm just going to, um, you know, I'm gonna add some really simple styling options. And instead of type your text here, I'll make it say enter your response here. So here we go. Um, this is where the user will enter their response about how they liked the course. But when you click on this open text entry, you'll notice on the right hand side that it's setting a variable named text entry equal to the typed value. So that's fine, but we want to use something a little bit more descriptive than just text entry. So go ahead and select the variable manager here on the right hand side. And instead of text entry, we're going to click on this and we're going to change it to um, user response. And we'll press OK. So that's great, but what if we have multiple open text response questions like this? So this one says, how do you like this course? Maybe we have another open text response question that says, um, what did you not like about this course? And instead of setting that variable to user response, maybe we hold it separately and set it equal to um, user response Q2 for question two. In other words, maybe we have multiple variables holding multiple different responses and we need a way to tell our XAPI statement which one of those responses to include in the XAPI statement. So we would do that in our code with a parameter. So I'm going to hop over here to our XAPI statement.javascript code. And um, right now we're just taking that user response variable. But what we can do is add a new parameter called open text var. And instead of including the user, the actual storyline variable that holds the user's response, we're just going to place this parameter here and we're going to tell the XAPI statement which variable we wanted to collect the response from. So just like we tell it, you know, which verb, verb ID object, and all of that, you know, all of this, we tell it what to include when we execute that code from Storyline. We're also going to tell it which variable to grab the response from. So that's perfect. There's just one last thing we need to do. So right now, when someone answers this multiple choice question that we've built over the last weeks, we actually just set the object ID equal to the, the choice they're selecting. Um, in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to put their response in the result.response object, just like we did with this open text response. 
But for now, we have a problem because, you know, if you look here, when we execute this code, it wants to know which variable is holding the user's response. And then it's going to use the player.getVar method to grab that response. Um, this response isn't being held in a variable. And same thing, when the user views the cheat sheet, that, there's no response associated with that. So what we're going to do so that our code doesn't break is we're just going to create a new variable by clicking this manage project variable options and we're going to create a new variable called placeholder. We'll press OK and we will press, press OK again. And now we have an empty variable and whenever we execute this code, and I'll show you here, we're just going to add an extra argument here and we're going to tell it to collect the value of this placeholder variable. And what that will do is it will make sure that nothing is included in this user response um, property right here. Because if it tries to get a variable that doesn't exist, our code's gonna run into an error and the rest of this isn't going to execute. And again, in a later tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can break this function down into many smaller, uh, more efficient functions. But for now, we're just gonna keep building on this one. So we need to use this little workaround. So to each of my, um, you know, everywhere else that I'm sending XAPI statements, I'm just going to add this placeholder argument. And finally, the cheat sheet, we're gonna change that JavaScript. So that's fine with that. We fixed up our old XAPI statements, but now we need to build the XAPI statement that's going to be sent from this new open text response question. So I think I'll just start that off by grabbing some JavaScript. I'm just gonna copy this execute JavaScript trigger from choice A on this uh, previous question. And then I'm gonna hop back over here, select the new submit button and paste that JavaScript trigger. You'll notice now that it's jumping to the next slide and then executing the JavaScript. The order is really important here because you know, if it jumps to the next slide, it's not gonna actually be on the slide anymore to execute the JavaScript. So we need to move that up in the stack. And now let's click on the JavaScript to edit it. So we're, we're using this answered verb, that still works. You know, we have the answered verb ID, that's perfect. We're not answering choice A, we're answering survey question. So I'm gonna swap that out. And in this object ID, we're going to swap out choice A for survey question. So our object description is a um, question in Dev Devlin sample quiz. I'm just going to change this to survey question in Devlin sample quiz. The activity type is indeed a question. And we don't want to pass that placeholder variable for the user's response. Instead, we want to pass this user response variable because that's what's going to be changed when the user actually types something new into this open text response box. And I just remembered, and this is quite important, JavaScript and storyline, they don't like it very much when the storyline variable is called the same thing as the JavaScript variable. So we're passing in user response as a storyline variable, but that's also what our JavaScript variable is called. So you see here with, um, you know, with the name, we use uname.js instead of uname and same thing with the email. So we actually need to go ahead and fix that. So we're gonna leave the JavaScript the same and I'm just gonna change the name of this storyline variable from user response to user response one with a capital O. So if I change it here in the code, I need to go ahead and change it here in the variable manager. So I'm just going to add a one just like I typed it in the execute JavaScript trigger. And once you've done that, we are good to go. And sure enough, when the user clicks this submit button, it executes that JavaScript and then jumps to the next slide. So we wanna test this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and select publish. Well, small issue, I'm just gonna change this first. On this last slide, Whenever the user clicks one of the options, it just executes the JavaScript, but it doesn't jump to the next slide. So I'm gonna create a new trigger so that whenever the user does select one of these boxes, it jumps to the next slide. 
So I, I just copied and pasted that down. So there we go. I'm going to save this file and now I'm going to publish it to my desktop. Once it's done publishing, let's go ahead and press this open button right here. And this opens up the folder that the storyline course is in. So just like last week, we have to edit this story.html file. So I'm going to right click this and select open with code. And I'm going to go back over to this storyline output. And we want to find the storyline output that we generated last week, because as you may remember, we want to take some things from there. So I'm going to take this xapi wrapper.min.js file and I'm going to copy it because we need to paste it into our new output. And um, I'm going to open this story.html file with code. And if you don't have the open with code option, remember you can do open with and then select your code editor. So we're going to open this new story.html file with code. So since I copied this xapi wrapper file, I'm going to go back to my new published output and paste that there. And now let's look at the code editor. I'm going to scroll all the way down from the old story.html file and copy these script tags that we pasted a lot in the last video. And now I'm going to go to the new published output folder and paste them here. If you don't have that, you can just pause the video now and look at these two script tags because these are what you want to paste right above this closing body tag in your published story.html file. And then make sure you do control S or file save to save that output. And we still need to um, get this xapi statement.javascript file to the right place. So I'm going to save it and then I'm going to do file save as. And now I'm going to make sure I save it in this new published output folder. So there we go. Once we've once this output folder is ready to go, once you know you just need these two JavaScript files in there, and you need to edit the story.html file to link to them with the scripts tags. Now we can actually test our work. So let's double click the story.html file to open it up. Um, I'll type my name. So we'll call it my name is Devlin text response, just so that we know what's from this week. And we'll do devlinpack at gmail.com. The answer will say is choice C. And how did we like this course? Um, how did I like this course? I loved this course because it was so easy. Okay, and I will submit that. So it's trying to jump us to the next slide, but there is no next slide. So let's go ahead and check our learning record store to make sure that our statements were received. I use Veracity LRS, so I just went to lrs.io, I signed in, I'm going to hop over to my YouTube LRS, and now to view the statement stream, I'll select XAPI data and statements. So sure enough, we can see that Devlin text response answered choice C and then answered the survey question. And if we extend this survey question XAPI object, we can see here, here's the response. The result that response is, I love this course because it was so easy. Um, we can also show this in the statement stream by selecting this configure option here. And maybe I'll turn off when it was stored and I will turn on the response. Now I'll close this and it's pretty small, but you can see my response out here in this column, which is where you would be able to see the response to all of the questions. So that is a wrap. Um, if you've made it this far, then good job. Um, you know, next week we're going to look at how we can store the user's responses to the multiple choice questions using that result.response object. And yeah, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. Feel free to subscribe because more XAPI tutorials are coming. And if you want to attend live, just hop on over to the Crowdcast. And, you know, we're, we're running live every week diving into a new XAPI topic. So I'll see you there. And if not there, then I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.